HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Michael Massione lets you know what you can learn at this year's Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series. We have responses to our question of the week, and we get you up to date with Hiller Sports, as the fall sports season is in full swing. But first, after 32 years of service to the Hopkinton Police Department, the Board of Selectmen honored Officer Pat O'Brien as he gets set to enjoy retirement. A big one tonight here, staff recognition. The Board will recognize Officer Pat O'Brien for his retirement and 32 years of service to the Hopkinton Police Department. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I had an opportunity this weekend to work with uh, Pat at the 300th, especially uh, after I led the parade. I went to his post and I uh, you know, watched the rest of the parade with him, which was an awesome parade. And the fireworks, by the way, are outstanding. And I think our officers are even going to uh, not accept uh, pay because they were so good. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, as I'm standing there, with, you just wouldn't understand the amount of people that come up and talk to him and, uh, you know, just constant praise of his efforts for all those years and the good work that he's done and how they're going to miss him. And it got to the point where it was a little aggravating because uh, I'm standing there and no one's even acknowledging me. I'm like, oh, Swiss cheese over here? <laughs> but obviously Pat has had a huge impact on this community because that's what he's done his whole career. He's engaged people, he problem solved, he helped people. And uh, one of the biggest things that I notice and I've learned from other people it's his empathy and understanding of people and their problems. And you couldn't ask for better traits for a police officer. And, uh, you know, some people think these community policing things are a, a new concept, but not with someone like Pat. He's been doing it his whole career, 32 years without a blemish and uh, on, on his career. And, uh, and the people that I talked to in the past and his former chiefs, they can't say enough about him. As far as the department, he's been looked up to as a leader, a mentor, and uh, he's always been that voice of reason with the younger folks and uh, it kind of brought calm to the station. So uh, someone like Pat cannot be replaced. We will certainly miss him, and uh, good luck in your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, first thing, I, like I told everyone, i just very fortunate to land in Hopkinton. Uh, for 32 years, uh, I couldn't ask for a better town to be in or a better department uh, to work for. Uh, the guys and the, the ladies uh, to my right here that I've worked with for many years and all the ones in the past, just incredible. Uh, the town, um, couldn't ask for better people. Very understanding of the police department and I think we created a great bond between the two that made our job you know, a lot easier. And I, I just wish going forward that my fellow workers and those that are coming after me can just have as much um, pleasure working for the department as I did. It's, it's, it was fantastic. So I thank the board, and I thank the boards before you, and I thank the chiefs before, Chief Lee, and all my fellow workers throughout the years for um, just a, a fabulous you know, opportunity to have a career here. So thank you. Ms. Catino, have anything to say? Yeah, you've just always been the exemplary example of a beat cop. I mean, <laughs> you know, just you know, walk around, you knew everybody, and, 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 and it's what policing's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be enforcing laws, but to do, be at the right place and do the right thing so that laws don't get broken. And it's just been a pleasure having you, having you on the force and seeing you all, all around town and everything else. And just thank you very much for everything you've done. It's, uh, it's been great. I'm just, I was great to, glad to see you in a uniform the other day. And, and I told you when, uh, when somebody came up to you and said congratulations, I didn't know whether it was for, uh, 
for retiring or getting back into uniform <laughs> again, because it was great to see you back in uniform, and we hope Thank to you. see you again. Appreciate it. Ron Town. Thank you. And, you know, you came through it with a, with a great attitude all the time, and uh, you're uh, an absolute asset to the community, and, uh, and you'll be missed. And as the Chief said, you can't be replaced, but Thank we'll try. You can. <laughs> Thank you. Good. And I, and I got a couple little points here. We actually got some bullets to put together to mention about you. So um, in summary, so you held the positions both all of patrol and detective and sergeant, so all, all three of them. You uh, actually at some point could have gone back to work in Milford, which is where your hometown is, but you decided to stay in Hopkinton, and you kept your whole family here, it sounds like, too. <coughs> so that's fabulous. Um, I think I should also point out that we've also seen you in other places, mostly on the basketball court, right? So you've been a town and, and varsity coach for years. And this is my favorite part of the whole thing. Apparently, at your retirement party, Tim Brennan had a, had a great line that I just have to repeat tonight, which was, Pat was always able to find the good in nearly everybody, even those he had to arrest. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that says something. Uh, so you've been a fixture. You'll be missed. You're the, you're the exemplar of the kind of officer we like to have in this town. And, uh, and thank you so much for all your service, and we look forward to seeing you for years to come. Congratulations on a terrific career to Officer O'Brien, and we wish you the very best of luck. The Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series provides information sessions on numerous health conditions from medical professionals. Here is more information on how the lecture series can benefit you and the topics you can expect at this year's series. Some people have brown eyes and some people have small spinal canals. And then what after much participation and interest, Hopkinton Drug will once again be hosting the lecture series at the Senior Center. The lectures provide information from doctors and medical professionals about various topics. Michael Massione of Hopkinton Drug explains. Yeah, this is Hopkinton Drug's fifth uh, annual health and wellness lecture series. And the series was created about five years ago for us to be able to give back to the community and it brings together um, doctors and patients in a friendly setting uh, that allows uh, patients to learn about important health topics and doctors as well to give back to the community. Um, we've had uh, many lecturers uh, in the past uh, return because uh, the response was warranted by uh, the patients that attended. This year we got a, a fantastic lineup, uh, one of our best um, kicking off on September 16th is Dr. Richie Shoemaker. He's world renowned for his work in biotoxin illnesses, uh, specifically um, mold illness and Lyme disease. Uh, we expect to have a full house, so if anyone wants to attend that lecture, it's best to RSVP. Um, the, the subsequent lectures to that are uh, a local uh, chiropractor, Dr. Ben, he's known by here in town. He'll be talking about low back pain. Uh, we have Dr. Kenneth Blanchard coming up. He's an endocrinologist. Uh, normally speaks to the audience about thyroid, but this year he'll be speaking about uh, menopausal hormone replacement therapy. Uh, following that lecture will be uh, a dentist from Ashland, Dr. Zarella. Uh, interesting topic, he'll be talking about how uh, your, the health of your mouth impacts your overall health. And then lastly, we have a doctor coming from Waltham to talk about uh, allergies and asthma uh, and a more integrative approach to that. So it's a good lineup. Uh, we'd like to invite everybody to come and it runs through September 16th through January 14th. Uh, you can find the information about this series on our website, which is rxinhealth.com. All ages can benefit from this. Um, I, I don't know what value it would uh, have to bring young children to the lecture, other than if you want them to accompany you for the night out. But uh, all age ranges, we see uh, people come in from their late teens to up into their 80s. Uh, the, the, uh, types of things that we talk about at these lectures apply to everybody. So um, if, if you're any age and you're having a, an issue that relates to one of these topics, it's definitely worth your while to come. And generally how it works is the lecture will start at the 6.30 this year. 
Uh, we, we started something new this year. Uh, in the past years, they were at seven, started at seven. But this year, Hopkinton Drug will give a pre-talk to the lecture uh, about some important things that we do. Uh, we've been asked to do that in the past uh, by people that um, attend the lectures. So this year, we're accommodating that request. But then generally, the doctor will talk uh, from uh, about 7 to 8 or 8.15, and then the floor is open for question and answers, which, by the way, is probably the most popular part of the lecture series. We'd like to invite the whole community. Um, again, you can, you can RSVP, uh, which is not necessary but recommended. Walk-ins are definitely welcome. Um, but uh, call me. Uh, I'm Michael from the Hopkinton Drug. My number is 508-435-4441 extension 111, and the email address is mmacione at rxandhealth.com, which is m-m-a-c-i-o-n-e at r-x and a-n-d health, h-e-a-l-t-h dot com. In case you can't make it out to the Senior Center for the lecture series, don't worry, we've got you covered. You can catch all the Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series airing right here on HCAM. HCAM News recently went down to Poly Arts. While we were there, we talked to some of those in attendance and asked them our question of the week. This week, we want to know, what is your favorite restaurant meal in Hopkinton? Oh, I'd have to say Bill's Pizza. I don't know. Does the yogurt place count as a restaurant? Sure. The yogurt place. Oh, we love the yogurt place. Oh, we love the yogurt place. I, I think I have to say gluten-free pizza from Bill's. Bar none, hands down, the golden spoon. And right now, we're in the uh, middle of summer, and we're just waiting for them to open up again in the fall. So I can't wait. Hurry back, golden spoon. Uh, my favorite restaurant, Hopkinton, probably Pan Thai. Um, I'm going to have to go with Vinny's Pizza. My favorite restaurant meal in Hopkinton, that's a tough decision because there's a lot of good restaurants in Hopkinton and a lot of good meals in Hopkinton. But I guess I'll have to go with uh, a good cheeseburger from Bill's Pizza because they're just fantastic. Uh, and breakfast at the Golden Spoon was always phenomenal as well. Um, usually takeout meals from, wa from Waterfresh. I like to go to the Pan Thai for lunch with my wife. Um, I like the sushi place. Oh, that's a tough one, too. You know what? I'd have to just go with a plain old snappy dog. Not that they're plain themselves, but I love them. My favorite restaurant meal in Hobbiton would probably have to be the Dynasty restaurant for their Chinese food. Favorite restaurant meal mm, would probably be the Pad Thai from the new Pad Thai place. <laughs> We want your opinion too. Head over to our website or Facebook page and comment under our question of the week video to let us know what your favorite restaurant meal in Hopkinton is. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will get you up to date with Hopkinton Hillers Sports. Courtney will have our HCAM Insider and we will revisit an event from this past summer in Hopkinton that you may have missed. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here, and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org, and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a ring. Welcome back to HCAM News. This past summer, the Hopkinton Police Department invited the public down to the middle school as they took part in National Night Out for the second year in a row. Here are some highlights of all that took place, just in case you might have missed it. For the second straight year, the Hopkinton Police Department took part in National Night Out 
The night is intended to bring local communities closer with their local police departments. Attendees of National Night Out got a tour of the local police cruisers, as well as enjoyed food and games and got a closer glimpse of the hard work involved to protect and serve the community. Yeah, second annual, great success, had a great crowd here. A little nervous about the storm at first, but uh, you know, it cleared up and we actually saw a rainbow out in the sky, so it was very nice. But uh, obviously we're bringing the community together in the essence of crime prevention. And uh, we brought a lot of, of our partners, the DA's office, obviously we have the uh, K-9 from Holliston, and uh, a lot of good information uh, at hand at different booths so people can, uh, you know, just be prepared for crime, but at the same time, have a good time and enjoy themselves. And I think we've done that tonight. And it's certainly a good way to uh, network with the uh, community's police department and learn a few things about what they do as well. Yeah, and it's good, you know, uh, our office is always out in the community, but it's good for uh, everybody to get together like this and get a better understanding of what we do, who we are, and... Uh, just build up that relationship between the community and the police. Uh, throughout the country this is going on and that's why a lot of times uh, you gotta stop planning early if you want to get resources like a canine or uh, we're supposed to get the Mass State Police helicopter tonight but I think it was grounded because of the uh, the weather but uh, you gotta get early on the list for that because every everybody in town is asking for the helicopter. <laughs> but yeah it's a national national thing. I did it before for many years in one socket and I was glad to bring it the idea here to Hopkinton, and uh, the community has really responded well to it. We couldn't do it without this guy here, Chief <laughs> Lee. Great time with the department. He's been with us over a year now. Things are going great um, without his support and the support of all the townspeople there for our second annual National Night Out. It's been a huge success again. We're just building a partnership with the community. Um, we just want to say to the people out there, um, you know, it's a great partnership. If you see something out there, say something in the neighborhoods. So, you know, in your gut, if, it's, if you don't feel it's right, give us a call. Um, us working together, like I said, the partnership, uh, we're looking to move forward and bring some great programs to the town and keep everybody safe. Thank you. Right. Well, good job. Right, a lot of hard work by uh, Steve, so Thanks, we certainly Steve. appreciate it. Sergeant Scott Van Ralton of the Hopkinton Police Department showed off some gear used by the regional SWAT team. We can talk Do you have to, to like hit anything or is it just like on? No, we have like a, a push to talk mm. button that is connected to the vest. Great. So, that um, this would be a good workout thing. You just can't if you're if you're running. Yeah. You can't get the oxygen you want because mm. it's going through a filter. Yeah. So okay. So. Um, so even though you're, you're like trying to get. If a we're standing breath. here talking, you're fine. Yeah. But if you run after something, like you just want to rip it off because yeah. it's it's you're not getting as much air as you want. One of the favorite parts of the night was the canine demonstration by Officer Matt Stone of the Holliston Police Department and his canine companion, Cash. Don't forget, you can check out hundreds of HCAM News segments and videos on our YouTube page by searching for HCAM on YouTube or on our website, hcam.tv. The fall season for Hiller Sports is in full swing, and a number of great games have already taken place. The Hillers football team started off on the road, and they had a very impressive TVL victory in Week 2 of the season. After starting off the season with a 12-0 loss to Wayland, on Friday, September 18th, the Hopkinton Hillers football team evened their record at 1-1 one one with an impressive 35-12 win on the road in Norton. Jake Keller threw touchdown passes to Jack Vacari and Will Abbott, while co-captain Sam Lehman had two touchdown runs and added two fumble recoveries on defense. Connor Hebert rounded out the scoring with a three-yard plunge and also had an interception. In all, the Hiller defense produced four turnovers, led by strong performances by their front seven, including Jack Golfie, Josh Sokol, Matt Burns, and co-captain Nick Pellucci. The Hopkinton Hillers girls soccer team started off the season 0-2-2 
on September 8th, a 0-0 tie against Westwood. Then the first game at home, a 1-1 tie with Ashland. Then on September 16th, they lost to Dover Sherborne, a one to nothing. And then on September 18th, Medfield got the best of the Hillers, four to nothing. So how would they respond to Norton? First half, about 13 minutes left to go. One in the middle, the shot, and it's one nothing Hillers. Maya Zent puts the Hillers on the board with an assist from Gabby Welding. But then, just over a minute into the second half, CC Brown comes up big for Norton. Someone in the box will give it a boot, and that is it. What a kick! CC Brown. And then no goal scoring until late in the game, with a little less than two minutes left. Megan Conti does this. Up in the box. Big opportunity here. The kick, it's a goal! Hillers take the lead. The Hopkinton Hillers pull off the two to one victory against Norton and get their first win of the season. The girls cross country team, they're three and oh. They defeated Ashland, Holliston and Medway so far this season. The Hopkinton Hillers field hockey team is two two and one on the season. They started off the season with a couple of victories against Ashland and Bellingham. Holliston then beat the Hillers on the 16th. Then on the 18th, the Hillers and Westwood tied at two. And then on the 22nd, Medway defeated the Hillers one to nothing. In golf, the Hillers so far so good, five and one on the season. In the first meet, they defeated Dover Sherborne, followed by a victory over Ashland. Then Medfield got the best of the Hillers back on Thursday, September 10th. The Hillers followed that up by beating Millis, Holliston, and Westwood. The Hillers boys soccer team started off the season with a 2-1 loss at home against Westwood, followed by a 6-1 loss at Concord Carlisle. How would they respond to Dover Sherborne? Well, it was a close game, but DS got the best of the Hillers in the second half. Jack Gardner puts in this first goal, and then later on, Will Herman, the captain, strikes and they would finish with a two to nothing score. The defending state champion Hillers girls volleyball team is off to a nice start. They are four and one on the season so far. Their first game of the year, they defeated Westwood three matches to nil, following that with a sweep of Ashland, but then they lost their home opener to Barnstable three to one, but then they got revenge as they took down Medfield three matches to one. Be on the lookout for HCAM coverage of Hiller's football, volleyball, and soccer airing on the HCAM channels. You can also find highlights and full games on our website and YouTube page. For everything else coming up on the HCAM channels, we turn to our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, September 25th at 8 p.m., Mike Shepard and Joe Markey join the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts to discuss the remaining steps in the elementary school building process. October 26th is the date of the special town meeting mm -hmm. where we need everyone to show up to uh, vote yes to fund this school. Okay. Uh, we did have a town meeting in May where we acquired property. Uh, that was to acquire the property, and that's been uh, uh, paid for. We have Hiller Sports on Saturday, September 26th, with Volleyball versus Barnstable at 1.30 p.m. and Volleyball versus Medfield at 3.30 p.m. On Tuesday, September 29th at 6.30 p.m., relive all of the festivities of the 300th anniversary parade with the bands, reenactments, floats, and more. At 7.30 p.m., the State of the Downtown Address will be given on past efforts to revitalize the downtown area and what efforts will be made in the future. At 8.30 p.m., it's a rematch between the Seniors, Fire Department, and Police Department in Bocce Throwdown 2015, Red vs. Blue. On Wednesday, September 30th at 7.30 p.m., female family members of all ages come together to show you how to prepare a Mexican feast on the gathering. So now you, um, you want to mash your avocados, but not so that it turns too fine. You do want it to maintain the little chunkiness. 
On Sunday, October 4th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from September 28th will air. It's easy to keep track of all of our upcoming programming with our HCAM Insider. If your friends want to know more, have them visit hcam.tv slash newsupdates, where they can also sign up to receive our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, for those of you that missed the big 300th anniversary celebration weekend just a couple weeks ago, you can find hundreds of pictures of the tremendous weekend at seenandhopkinton.org and many videos of all the tremendous events that took place on our website, hcam.tv. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well. Smile has gone.